My next guest is going to be taking on Brady Hong coming up here at Contender Series on August 11th. It is Adrian Yanez joining me here on the program. Adrian, how's it going? Yeah, it's going great, man. I'm just blessed to be in this position, man. I'm loving it. I'm loving it a lot. Yeah, it was cool to see you on the promo. I don't know if you caught that over the weekend. They had the Contender Series promo, and obviously I know it was a, a tough one for you uh, talking about your dad and everything like that. How was that, you know, going through just the promo stuff and getting ready for this big fight, I'm sure, with a bit of a heavy heart? Man, uh, the promo stuff was, was good. We did a lot of talking. Uh, they, they pulled it out of me, man. I usually don't ever really talk about any of that stuff. I'm more of a, a recluse whenever it comes to talking about any of that stuff. Uh, but also, at the same time, it was really great just to sit there and like talk about my dad. So it was really great. I had, I giving my dad's story a little bit, you know, going the, through the hardship that he had went through, uh, and then still fighting to the very end, trying to uh, stay up for his family. Like to me, that like it also helped motivate me. It was really good. It was it was tough for me to talk about, but it it was. It was one of those things that I'm glad that I was able to get out there because a lot of people have reached out to me and were uh, were just saying, man, like, man, my dad's my best friend, too. And I, I've had a, a good amount of people hit, uh, talking to me and uh, talking to me, reaching out, saying, man, that actually helped them. So, man, I it, it felt good getting that out. And also, man, I this I'm just excited for this opportunity, man. Training camp's been going phenomenally. Uh, this is like I've had I have like nothing but hungry guys that just want to fight. I have two other training partners that are on the contender series as well. So we're all training for the same goal. We're all trying to get to the next level and get into the UFC. That's awesome, man. We got a lot to get into. Obviously, you mentioned your training camp there. We'll get to that in a bit. But I wanted to know, when did you actually find out about this fight? Because I know for a lot of fighters, they had the fight booked earlier in the year and then COVID moved things out. Were you one of those cases or did this happen a little bit later? Yeah, I was supposed to fight March 13th uh, for Fury Fighting Championship uh, against Ricky Tercios, who was also a Dana White Contender Series vet. Uh, it, he fought Boston Salmon, which was a tough fight uh, for him. So, like, I was like, man, if I beat this, if I beat this guy, I'm a, I'm a shoe in for the contenders. Uh, that fight fell through. COVID nineteen messed that messed that fight up for me. Literally hours before the event, so I was it, it took, threw me in limbo. But after that had got canceled, they were like, well, the upside to this is that you're going to be on the contender series. So I was super excited super ecstatic but also with everything in limbo i didn't know exactly when we didn't know if it was going to stay on in may uh if it was getting pushed back or even if they were even going to continue with the contender series uh so i had kind of like it, it it was still in that of that mix of like man i don't even know if this is going to happen but i was still trained during that whole time uh they like ever since January, I've been training for a fight. So, uh, it is same mindset, just still going strong, still going in. Uh, got that fight with Brady Hong, and then it was solidified uh, a couple weeks ago. I'm glad to see you get it. I mean, it's it's long overdue. One of the things I'll give you credit with, and it's also credit for, I'm sure, for fighting for LFA, but you fought nothing but tough competition. I think that's one of the things we see on the Contender Series where guys have a nice record and then they just haven't fought the level of competition. They get exposed. Like, I remember when you fought Miles Johns, that was a split decision loss, and that was a fight that I think could have gone either way. Um, how much do you feel like you've improved since that last fight, which was your last loss? Man, it, it, it actually legitimately changed my whole mindset. Because after that fight, what? I went back into the locker room and I just looked at my coach and I was just like, I'm not tired. Like, why am I not tired? I'm in shape. I'm in shape, but why am I not? Like, why didn't I push myself to the extent of like, man, if I would have done just a little bit more during this fight, I could have won. It was, it was like, it was literally just one judge that, uh, that scored it differently. So I could have took that fight, but I didn't push myself hard enough in that fight. Because I went to the back and I was breathing just fine. I was wasn't tired. I was looking at. I was like, man, what what do I need to do differently? And then my 2019, right after that, my 2019 was just a reflection of that. I pushed hard, got two finishes, and then I I fought Kyle Estrada. I thought I don't think that fight was a split decision. I was gonna say uh, it should have been unanimous on that one. Yeah, it, it, yeah, I felt like it should have been unanimous, but at the same time, it gave me this different mindset. With that going to split decision, I'm like. I am searching for finishes. So so this whole entire time from January all the way up until now, I've been just looking to finish, whether it's on the ground or standing. I'm just honing my skills so I can just start finishing them more efficiently. 
What do you know about your opponent here, uh, Brady Hung? Uh, 11 and one record. Uh, how do you feel like you match up against him here? I feel like I match up very well against him. He's, I, I don't feel he's fought as not nearly as good a competition as I have. I, I fought two fighters who are in the UFC right now, and they both went to split decisions. Uh, look at his his loss. He fought Martin Day, who's in the UFC right now, but he got starched by him. Uh, I'm not trying to down talk Brady, Brady or anything like that, but his level of competition that he's fought is not nearly the same level of competition that I fought in my career. So I take that as a plus and also look at that. He's going to look across the cage and you're going to see that guy's a stud. He's fought all, all the toughest guys, and he's in for a long night. And I'm just looking at it, and I'm just, man, it's like he's just another guy. I'm going to go in there and do what I do, and I'm just going to try, try my best to get him out as soon as possible. You talked about having a good camp. Uh, where are you training right now, and who have been some of your main training partners? You mentioned the Contender Series uh, guys as well. Like Who who you been working with? Man, uh, my, my coach, Salsa Lee, uh, he's, he's been doing a great job of like having a place for us to train. Uh, when uh, when the whole COVID-19 stuff went on, the gym shut down. Uh, but we ended up finding having a small little warehouse where we were able to set mats on the ground and just train. And I was training with uh, Jacob Silva, who's fighting August 25th uh, on the Contender Series, and then also training with Leo Mano Martinez. Both those guys are phenomenal fighters. Jacob Silva, he if he touches you on the chin, you're going to sleep. <laughs> He's a small 125er, but... He has this type of power that uh, 125 that 125ers just don't have. And then Liam Mano Martinez, man, he he mixes it up very well, man, I, very very well. So I get the diversity of both. Uh, they're both very skilled in what they do. So I'm on my toes all the time. And then I have I have a much more fighters. Like we have a couple more amateur fighters. And then also I've been training with a little bit of a heavier heavier set guys like. Uh, I got a guy named Derek Ajday and Jason Langler. Derek, he's, he fights at 170. He's also a phenomenal wrestler. Uh, he might not have the greatest record, but his wrestling is phenomenal. It's very, very phenomenal. It's super small little details that he does that no, nobody else really does. And, man, like he's been helping me out a lot. If I'm able to stuff takedowns from him, I'm able to stuff takedowns from a lot of people. So, man, I just, I, I've been surrounded by a lot of, a lot of good fighters. A lot of really, really, really good fighters. So, man, I'm 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 heading into this fight very, very confident. The weight cut, how's that going? Because you mentioned sort of being in a longer camp, I would imagine the cut's going to be a little bit easier just because you've been in shape for so long. Oh yeah, this is the in in a weird thing. Like I've always been the fluffier the fluffier fighter because I'm like, whenever I first started MMA, I weighed 200 pounds. Uh, so now my first amateur fight was at 55, then I moved down to 45, and then now I'm at 35. You know, I my diet was always in a weird place. So, like, out of training camp, I would gain up to, like, 165, and then I'd get – and somehow be bigger but not show it. But whenever I dropped down in weight, I would have uh, some fat to me. It was really weird. But, man, I've actually been weighing – been weighing a little bit more but a lot more toned out, and which is, to me – has been great for me because I've been in more in the best shape that I've ever been in. I've I feel strong, I feel fast, and man, I'm just ready. Uh, I think the weight, like my whole diet and like my whole lifestyle change, has been has been great to me. Like even during this whole COVID stuff, I've been had like I don't ha- I don't get to go out. I don't have to go out there and go uh, find a find a place. I, I'm cooking everything at home. Everything's just been better for me, I, man. COVID-19 was somehow a blessing for me in my whole diet experience. So that's what, that's been great to me. How's the fight playing out on August 11th? I'm sure you've envisioned it in your head over and over again, but how do you see it playing out? Oh, playing out, man. I think I starts this guy first round, first round. Uh, I've been envisioning it going into the second, just like about 10% of the time. But I honestly don't see it leaving the first. I don't see it leaving the first. He's, I don't think he matches well against me. He's, he's like, if I'm looking at him, he's, if, if I'm him looking at me, uh, he better be scared. He better be scared. Cause I have heavy hands and I'm a, I'm a slick boxer. And I, and I man, I, I put, if I touch him on the chin, he's going to sleep. He's going to sleep. 
What would it mean to finally get that UFC contract? Again, I know you've thought about this for a while, but especially with all the success you've had lately and just, you know, you mentioned your father. I'm sure there's a lot going into this fight uh, on August 11th. And it, it would mean a lot to me. It would mean, it would mean the start of a new journey because my whole, my whole entire career was just me just getting this one shot. You say, like just getting this one shot. Now I have this shot. So if I go in there, starts this guy, and Dana White says, hey, I like, that's exactly what we want in here in the UFC. Here's your contract. I'm taking it, and I'm running with it. I'm going, and I'm trying to go out there and just get another fight and trying to start anybody who's in front of me because, man, it's you also want to get the $50,000 bonus, of course. But, man, I just want to go out there and just keep fighting. Uh, it's my dream to fight. I, I've been – this is a goal that I've set for a very long time. I, I've worked hard to get here. And it would mean the absolute world to me to get that contract because I want to keep doing this. Uh, it'd be I'd be stuck in that weird place if uh, if I don't get it. You know, I'd have to keep working at it again. And you're just taking yourself back back in the road. And you're just like, man, it puts you in a weird place. So I really am been training my butt off to get to this position, and I'm not letting it slip away from me. We can't wait to watch this fight, man. It's uh, it's coming up here August 11th. It is uh, Contender Series. Uh, Adrian, so great getting a chance to catch up with you, man. Glad to hear uh, this has all worked out in terms of you getting this opportunity. Uh, just remind people where they can find you on social media. And if you got any sponsors or thank yous or shout outs, the floor is yours, man. Oh, man. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at AdrianYanez93. Also follow me on Twitter uh, at Yanez MMA. I have an MMA uh, Facebook page. Uh, called Adrian Yanez MMA. Go ahead and give that a like and a follow. Uh, also, a big shout out to HKA USA, their training gear. Man, uh, give them a like, give them a follow on Instagram at HKA USA. They've supplied me with all my, my training gear for my upcoming fight. So, really great. And also, shout out to my coach, Salsa Lee. Shout out to my family. Much love, man. Very inspirational, man. They, they, they've been pushing me. They've been they've been the reason why I've been pushing so hard, man. Uh, also, big shout out to Radio Sports Agency. They've changed my life.